Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tash and I'm a holistic health coach that specializes in women's health, particularly those that have lost their period due to hyperflamic amenorrhea. And if you're not already, then I would love to connect with you over on the gram. So if you wanna follow me on Instagram, I am at whole.heartedly.tash. This video is one that was requested and it is the signs that your period is coming back, which is a super exciting topic. Uh, I just want to kind of say that everyone is different and obviously will have different symptoms or maybe not even that much, but I thought I'd give you a bit of an idea of what you can look out for. So the first time would be that your libido is increasing, so your sex drive. Now usually with like low estrogen and amenorrhea, potentially your sex drive can be quite low. Therefore, that's a really great sign if you're getting that back um, and it's ramping back up. But also, it means that your estrogen level is increasing and usually we see that as well at the peak at ovulation time. So it also is an indication that you could even be ovulating. The next one is cervical mucus, which you might see um, little changes throughout your recovery and an increase in cervical mucus. You might even see that your cervical mucus changed to a consistency that looks like you're ovulating, but goes on for a while and you don't actually ovulate. And it's just your body um, can keep trying to ovulate and get close to ovulate, but just not quite make it, which is also quite normal, but it means you're heading in the right direction. Usually with low estrogen or amenorrhea or hyperflammate amenorrhea, we see um, no cervical mucus or very little cervical mucus. So any increase in that is a really great sign. What we're looking out for is um, it will go to like a consistency that potentially is like lotion-like and then maybe even um, very fertile would be your stretchy egg white cervical mucus that you're looking out for around ovulation. Now remember everyone is different and some people have a lot of cervical mucus, some people have hardly any which makes it really hard for them to tell but it's something to look out for and know you're on the right track to get in your period. You can also check out your cervical position if you like to see if you've ovulated then. Usually the cervix rises up when you're ovulating and then it will be quite low when you're not ovulating, so around your kind of period kind of time. So if you want to you could look at that and see if your cervix has changed position and if it has raised up higher that might mean that you're ovulating. In conjunction with checking your cervical position, checking your cervical mucus, you might wanna check your basal body temperature, which is a great indication of once you've ovulated. And then once you've ovulated, you know your period is coming. Now with basal body temperature, I do have a video on this, but you just take your temperature every morning to the 10th degree, and then you jot it down onto like an app or physical paper. And that will let you know once you've ovulated because there'll be a spike that will stay risen for at least three days. Um, that will show that you've ovulated the day before the spike. You also might realise that you're feeling slightly warmer as well because um, progesterone is a heat inducing hormone and when we have low hormones, we've got this amenorrhea, we might be feeling super cold because our body doesn't prioritise regulating our body temperature. It has more important things to do when we're not giving it enough energy, it wants to um, provide our enough energy to our heart to keep on beating and all our vital organs etc. Our reproductive system and keeping us warm is not a priority. Another big one that women do say that they get is sore boobs. So this is again due to the rise in estrogen and that might come around ovulation time and stick around to your period or just before your period. So it's one to look out for as well. Another thing to show that you're kind of on the right track could be that your hips are widening, which is quite a weird thing to say, but that is due again to the estrogen, which is making our hips bigger and giving us these kind of more curvier, womanly look. With your increased calories, you might be putting on a little bit more fat, which means that um, fat is linked with estrogen, so this is therefore why you're potentially getting these wider hips. Another one is constipation. So this is due to the progesterone rising that can make you constipated just before your period. And then on the flip side of that, once you've actually got your period, as a side note, um, prostaglandins, um, they can help with muscle contractions and they actually give you like, they are the things that give you the cramps. They increase, which means that you're more likely to have loose stools and diarrhea around your period time because of them. 
Also, the last one is yeast infections. So this is a bit of a random one, but because your hormones are fluctuating throughout the cycle, this can mean it can disrupt your pH level in your vagina, which gives you these yeast infections just before your period. This happened to me actually, when I got the progesterone challenge, the Provera challenge, I then developed a yeast infection just before my like fake bleed from that challenge. And then also I got one just before my actual first recovery period too, just due to the fluctuation of hormones my body being like oh my god I've never had these hormones before um, so that can be something to look out for as well. I would like to note though that you shouldn't be getting yeast infections all the time so that is definitely a flag that you need to look into if that is you. So that's all the signs that your period is coming back to you. If you've got any other questions just leave them down below and I'll see you in the next video. Hi.